Hey guys, uh, today I wanted to kind of talk to you about uh, a little bit more about foundations. <clears throat> so to kind of back up and give you a little bit of history of foundations and so forth, this is a stacked rock foundation, which is illegal uh, by today's standards, but a lot of this happened in um, the Appalachian area and really across New England and, and all over the world. Uh, in the beginning, while people were trying to figure out what was going on and how to build their houses and this kind of thing. So when folks came to uh, Appalachia, then, um, you know, they, they may or may not have known uh, how to build houses very good. So, uh, you know, they, they got here and they, they just did their best to kind of get into the first season. So a lot of times they built their houses on just stacked rocks and then when warm weather came around then they would uh, try to fix these and uh, you know it's <laughs> uh, this was a, an ongoing you know it was an ongoing job. My father's house was built very much this very same way and as long as I can remember I mean the house to my knowledge was was built uh, in the early 18, or excuse me, in the later 1800s, and I can remember, you know, helping my uncles go out and restack the block or the rocks uh, underneath the foundations uh, so that uh, it wouldn't settle. And uh, like I say, this was a, a common practice, and I mean, it looks pretty dangerous, you know. I mean, we think about, uh, you know, what if these things moved and settled? I mean, this is actually on a slope here, for God's sakes. how they've actually withstood time and so forth. And so, you know, we as we come up in time, we find that, you know, a lot of rock like this, I mean, you think about, you know, these were these were very old and, you know, castles were built out of rubble uh, and and they have withstood the test of time, but as as a rule of thumb, uh, in the code right now, we cannot we cannot do any type of foundations out of rubble uh, like this because it is it is not um, well. I mean, you see, it's not consistent. Is what I'm trying to say. So you know, you have pressure points through here where the rocks actually touch, and then you have a lot of gaps in here, and the the force cannot be easily. Uh, Going through here. In other words, let me let me pull So if we have a force that is applied come on. Give me what I want. So if we had a force that was applied here then you know this force is running across through here and down through here and over here and maybe back over here and over here wherever these rocks touch that's where the force uh, may be moved or transferred so that you know it, it doesn't work it's just not good we need a consistent anti-force straight up and down to take care of this problem here so that uh, you know we have good settlement. We don't want to have differential settling, and that's a word that uh, I want to come. Where was that? Uh, wasn't here. It had to be there. I moved too far and didn't didn't save it. No, I didn't see those. Let's see if I can just back up here. Okay, so yeah. So differential settling uh, or differential settlement. Uh, so what we've got, what we got going on here is, um, let's see if I can find a better house. Doggone it. That one, that one will work. 
Okay, so what's going on here is we have we have a you know a good firm foundation over here. Maybe there's maybe there's a rock underneath the ground here, and it's keeping this house from sinking. But over here we don't have anything, and and maybe it's just muck or silt or so forth. And it, we talked about that a lot, uh, some in the last uh, video. But uh, you know, this is this is typical for houses that are built with without a good footing on it, and and that is where we need to really pay attention. Now, of course, this has probably went through a hurricane such as this as well. But now you've got to remember, I mean, this is standing good and they've got a fairly good foundation on here. And uh, so, you know, differential settlement is bad, very, very bad. And buildings fall. So, uh, you know, it's, it's unbelievable as to what can happen when we don't build correctly. All right, so moving on. So if you ever get a chance, go to Cades Cove. This is one of the houses at Cades Cove, and most all of their houses have been built in this way here. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I want to show you, you know, this chimney here is made out of stone, but I want to show you something that, uh, that would have happened in the day when people were... Uh, I can't think, I can't talk and type. Okay, so uh, a log chimney. So this was common practice uh, in the early days when, uh, again, when, when uh, the pioneers came over and tried to build a house. Again, they're trying to get into the house as quickly as they can before uh, before winter hits, and they would basically build these chimneys out of wood, and then uh, they would line the inside of the chimneys with clay or or uh, mud mixed with uh, some organic material like grass and so forth, and then if they you know if they survived then they would tear these down in most cases and they would go back with a stone chimney. Uh, like I say, if it survived. A lot of the houses so forth. Uh, so we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more when we get into uh, log homes and early uh, home history. Uh, so if you get a chance, go to Cades Cove and you know just just go around the loop it's 11 mile loop and it's really cool and you know it's just I, I love it i love it i wish i could go uh more and more but i just can't uh because um of time basically so cades cove this is the 11 mile loop around through here and uh uh so that you got a campground there if you travel this road back, you'll come to Gatlinburg, and Cades Cove is just a beautiful, beautiful place and has a lot of very, very cool houses, um, and it has grist mills and um, just really neat stuff. So get a chance, go take a look at that, and this is really the history of how our houses started out. And again, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. But for right now, I want to go through some other types of foundations uh, with you. I, I kind of hit on that a little bit on the last video, but I wanted to kind of go into it a little bit more in depth uh, today and talk about different types of foundations. Um, this is the wooden pier uh, foundation. So you see these a lot down at the coast. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's a pretty, matter of fact, that that's about the only type of, of foundation that you can use. In uh, you know, this is what you typically see. Now notice that this house has a lot of cross braces through here. And in this one, 
it didn't have so many and obviously you see what happens when you don't have these cross braces in the code it talks about these cross braces a lot especially in decks and so forth and so if you have uh, if you have these type of foundations you are required to to do not less than one-third length in other words you take this length here bam you divide it by three and this is the cross brace that has to be applied into here cross braces shall be between 45 and 60 degrees so 45 being the best but sometimes these posts might be really close and you might have to go a little bit steeper so uh, that's that's the the best way if you get a chance go into your uh go into the talking about in the code and uh, so this is appendix m you can find it on codes.iccsafe.org these are free uh, for you but you can't copy and paste uh, and it's you can do, still do searches and so forth but you have some kind of limited access to it uh, I have a, a premium access which allows me to do a whole bunch of things but nevertheless uh, you know it talks about uh, the you know the 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 ways that we need to uh, address our buildings in uh, and I want to kind of explain that to you so let's talk about the code all right so the code all right now let's think about let's think about school all right so uh, all right, come on I keep hitting the wrong button here come on what are we gonna do to get this thing go technology All right, so S C H O O L school. All right, so there is a fine line here, and I'm gonna draw that line completely across through here. We have uh, in school for grades, we have an A, we have a B, we have a C, we have a D, and we have an F or E. Now let's think about that. This is the pass line. The pass, look at that, I can't even spell correctly. Pass, fail. All right, so this is the pass, fail line. This is a D, which is just passing. All right, and then you have the F, which you don't pass at all. So this is the code. All right, so if you build a house uh, and it passes, great. If you build a house and it fails, that's not so great. See where this is? The code says that you can build a house to a grade of D and that's okay. So you have to decide yourself what type of house do you want to live in and what type of house do you want to build for a customer, okay? Somewhere in the line here, this is going to make, all right? So basically this is saying there and here. So what do you want, okay? So that is the building code explained as simply as possible. The building code is a crappy D, okay? So this is the lousiest house that you can actually build by law. Keep in mind of that. And that's what this code is all about. This whole code is a grade of D okay so wood foundations they're they're shoved into place they're they're uh, they've, they've got a pounder that pounds these boogers in place and you'll see those a lot sometimes they put them on barges and they can go around and they can pound these things in but uh, for the most part when you're talking about a house they're done exactly the same way I have a cousin who works uh, as a contractor down at Kitty Hawk 
And uh, he has never built a house with a foundation other than the, the wooden pier foundation. So keep that in mind. Going on, we have a, a caisson. So a caisson is nothing more than an oversized pier. These things are huge. Uh, you can bail those as well. Uh, it may be used. It may not be used. Uh, it could be uh, bored. It could be uh, drilled in. But the most part, a caisson has... Got to go back and find it. So a rebar cage is built to go inside of these caissons and these uh, piers or piles. A pier and a pile is pretty much the same thing. It's just depending on what part of the country you're from as to what you call it or the world. But these cages are enormous in some cases. And so that gives the concrete strength. And in my next video, I'm going to talk about concrete, but I just kind of want to give you an, a, a real quick uh, understanding of what rebar cages are and why they're important. So they are they slam full of of rebar when they're when you're building these caissons. Like I say, a caisson is an oversized uh, pier. This kind of gives you an idea of the of the size of a caisson. So caissons are enormous. is what we have a lot of times in our houses around here. We have uh, cohesive soil, meaning that it's clay, uh, it, it will hold together if we uh, ball it up, it will stick together, and it will, it will hold. So we can build, we can dig out our footings very easily, uh, and they're going to stay up as long as we get it poured before it rains, whereas in some places, like you might have uh, uh, non-cohesive soils that will not support wet concrete, and we have to uh, put uh, pier, or excuse me, we have to put form boards around those to help those stay together. But for our purposes, a spread footing uh, does nothing more than just spreads the weight out so that they uh, won't sink. Whoop, wrong one. So we have our weight coming down here and uh, have our weight coming down off of our building. And then as it comes down through here, then it is spread over a greater distance. And that allows for the PSI to decrease. So if we have 100 PSI here and we split it four ways, then uh, we're going to have 25 PSI uh, down here. So if our if we're talking about what type of soil compaction that we have at this point here, if it is uh, if it's a hundred psi here and we're on a four a hundred psi, then we're right at the threshold. We could sink, we could not sink. But if we increase this, then we can uh, we can allow for more reducing the PSI so that we allow our buildings to stand. You will also hear me call this a continuous footing, uh, obviously because it's continuous all the way around the building. All right, so a continuous spread footing. You'll hear it all kinds of ways. This is kind of typical of what we see here uh, in Western North Carolina spread footing or continuous footing. A pile cap. <clears throat> so we've talked when we're talking about piles, piles are uh, just you know going down into the earth, but then when we have multiple piles, then we can uh, we can make these one with each other by putting a pile cap on it. So pile caps, Basically, just take a whole 
then our surface, our uh, again, our weight comes down. Our weight comes down, and it is drawn together by this pile cap, and then equally transferred into the pile group, so that we are uh, we have good uh, equilibrium uh, to our foundations. So piers. So why do we we build piers? Well, let's say if we have a skyscraper, for instance. You know, a skyscraper has all this building setting on just this amount here. So when we're back over here talking about our spread footings here, this is our house. All right, we may have one story, we may have two stories, but it's all setting on this one little area. When we get over to a skyscraper, we have multiple houses up through here setting on the same amount of area. So we have to figure out a way to get those past all this subsoil, okay, or this mineral soil, and get down to the bedrock, all right? So we use these piers uh, to transfer the building's weight all the way past through the subsoil uh, to the bedrock. Remember, topsoil is organic, subsoil is, uh, is mineral soil, and then we have the bedrock, which is what we really want to attach to. And again, I'll be talking about this just in a little bit more, but I want to kind of give you this. Remember that these, this is a pier that just sits right on the, the bed, bedrock. Socketed pier at that point because we've drilled into the bedrock. So let's talk about friction piers. So we can make friction piers in this form, which is a skin friction, just by making this thing go back and forth like this so that when we, uh, we have basically in these little areas here, if this were trying to push downward, then everywhere we have this little vertical or this little non-vertical section here, then that is gonna be a friction point so that it does not sink. Other types of friction piers uh, are compaction piles, or remember piles and piers are the same thing. And then, uh, you know, we have sheet wall and all sorts of things. So here I want to explain one thing. A beam and a post, okay? So I'm gonna write these terms over here. Uh, post, beam. What is the difference in a beam and a post? How many of you said that a post goes up and down? And a beam goes horizontally. All right, so the post is vertical and the beam is, I'm sorry, wrong. Yeah, 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 that's right, beam. The beam is horizontal. Okay, how many of you said that? What if I told you, you're wrong? That is not true. That is not true. So let's let's go back and figure out now. Wait a minute. What what's the difference here? All right. So the difference is the forces. Okay. So let's let's talk about forces. Forces. All right. A beam has a bending force. A post has a compressive force. Sorry, can't. My spelling, I'll be the first to admit, I can't spell. So sometimes in class or Zoom, you might have to help me 
uh, spell things. Okay, so we have bending forces, we have compression forces. So a post is always under a compression force and a beam is always under a bending force. And I'll explain this a little bit more. Other forces that we have are tension and shear. So a shear force is, let's say if we have another post here, and then we had a large amount of weight offset from this, then at this point here, this could shear straight off and this would fall. Okay, so that's, that's shear. Let's try to make this a little smaller so it don't need to be so big there. How's that? That's better. Um, tension. Let's say that we have that wind, that uplifting wind that's going to be coming across through here. And we get this uplift here. All right, so when we get an uplift, that is uh, tension. Anything that is pulling it. Okay, so let's say if we, you know, if we had two tractors over here, we're trying to pull this beam apart, then that is also tension. Okay, so bending, compression, tension, shear. That's what we're going to talk about for right now. There are some others, twisting and so forth like that. But for right now, these are the forces that I almost want to stick with. All right, so a post is compression. A beam is bending. So let's look at this picture right here. Is this a post? This one, sorry. Got to turn it back on. Okay, so is, is this here, is this a beam or a post? It's going up and down. Is it under a compression force? Downward? No, it's not. It is under a bending because we have all of this pressure from this ground pushing at it in this way and it's wanting to bend that outward in this. So this is a beam, not a post. Okay, keep that in mind. This is a beam, not in a post because it is under bending force. Is this a beam or a post? So we have pressure being applied in this section and it's not vertical, it's diagonal. And we have anti-forces being pushed up from below. So this is a post and this is a beam. Okay, keep that in mind guys. Masonry piers. Uh, so we have different types of, uh, and these piers also are called pilasters. Uh, so these are reinforcing uh, pilasters for this wall. So let's let's look at that for a second. Look about and talk. We have this portion here that's sitting on this larger footing. And then we have this thinner wall that's sitting on a spread or continuous footing. So what's the purpose of these? So these are going to be uh, pressure points or uh, shear points, these pilasters. So this is where the majority of the building is going to be resting on. However, uh, because this might be very thin here, and this could be just brick, just one, 
one wyth of brick, and that word is wyth, and I can't spell it. There's more to it than that. T-H-E, there you go, wyth. Let's clear that up, we're going to spell it better. Wyth. Okay, so a wyth is basically one row of brick. And we're going to talk about that also a little bit later in masonry. So uh, a one wyth of brick uh, is very flimsy, okay? There's no strength to it at all. So we have to go in and we put these pilasters in here, number one, for our downward force, okay? So this is, this is a, um, a, 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 a pier, a, a column. What am I trying to think of? Post, sorry. It is a post. All right, but then it's also reinforcing this wall in a bending force like that, so it is a post slash beam. Perfect example of that. Masonry uh, piers or pilasters. The belled pile or pier. Again, we've kind of discussed this a little bit. I keep forgetting to turn my little thing on here where I can draw it. Again, we're, we're taking these forces down through here and we're increasing them just like the spread footing so that we have less PSI. PST, there I go again. Less than PSI. So we want to be, this we want to be less than the ground underneath it. So this needs to be greater PSI, and this needs to be less PSI so that we have a greater force of up so that the building does not sink. So, we have to protect our foundation some way, and when we're talking about a house, especially if we have a basement uh, or even a crawl space, we don't want uh, any kind of water seeping into our basement or crawl space, and so there's things that we have to do to protect this. One, we have to put a perimeter brain, drain around the house. Now, in the state of North Carolina, we don't have to put this interior uh, we don't have to put this interior one on here, but it's, uh, it's, it's not required, but it could be a good idea uh, to have it if you have a lot of water that's gonna be you know getting in. Hopefully, we don't ever have any water that gets in here at all. Hopefully, we're stopping this all at this point. So this is generally a four inch perforated uh, corrugated drain that goes all the way around the the building all the way around the building even on the low side and then is open to light what does that mean that means that it goes to the surface of the ground so if uh i mean i wish there was an easier way to change this stuff and go back and forth i'm still kind of learning all of this hoopla and stuff so uh, let's look down for a minute. We're looking down as the crow flies. We have our house foundation. We're going to put a foundation drain uh, all the way around it. Let's just draw it full. Even on the low side. And then they drain to light. All right. So let's let's look at this. Here's our Here's our slope, and we're going to build our house on this slope. So we're going to dig this out, put a basement, put our foundation in, do our first floor and our roof, and we have our house here. Uh, something that kind of always irked me. I mean, I was, I guess I was, you know, when I was growing up in the kindergarten, I hated to see those kindergarten kids put that chimney on there like that right there. 
But, you know, there's tons of pictures of it like that. Drove me absolutely batty. Uh, my chimney on my house looked like that right there. I've never seen a chimney looking like that. And if I did, I, you know, it needs to be changed. But let's get back. So this drain would be at this point here at the bottom of the the uh, foundation wall. And then it it runs all the way out. You know, what that what does light mean? That means it can be hit by the sun's rays. So the term used is that this drain will run to light. So we have to protect this drain. This drain generally has a sock around it, uh, or uh, it has, sometimes it has, let's, let me show you what that looks like. Drainage pipe. Can't spell drainage pipe. Let's get some images on here. Drainage pipe. So this is the, the perforated corrugated. So you can get it in a PVC that have these big holes in it. And sometimes they only have holes on one side. All right. Sometimes they don't have them all the way around. They just got them on one side. The new ones today have slits in them like this. So when you buy a pipe like this, uh, it's going to look... except it's going to have these little slits in it. Uh, let's see. Did that one show it? Okay, so we also have the little holes. So, yes. And and you'll see this green line on here. So what does that green line mean? That means you better be seeing that green line when you put this down because there is an up and down. So this is the way it goes. This That little line goes up. Why does that make a difference? Well, because some of this pipe only have holes on one side, such as this one, and the hole must go down. You heard me right. The hole must go down. And I'll come back and explain that in just a minute. But for right now, I wanted to show you uh, the sock. So this is a drain pipe that has the sock on it. This is a drain pipe that has uh, the sock. What in the world? Let's go. All right. This has the sock. Particles in it that uh, there you go so you don't have to add gravel to this you just throw the whole pipe down there as is and these generally have uh, the holes all the way around it and you don't have to worry about being up or down you just throw it in there connect it all together and uh, that gives you an idea of how big this thing is and so anytime you have any kind of wall that's going to have water on it you need to use these drain pipes uh, so, you know, these drain pipes help serve a purpose and I've lost where I was at. Where was I? Foundation drains. There we go. So, uh, yeah. So we have this. Now, as far as code is concerned, code says that we have to put uh, a parging on and let's see if I can find a parging. Of course I can't. up I don't want to lose that one picture and then I have a masonry wall parging parging masonry wall uh, let's go to pictures v images okay so this is parging so basically it's just you know taking what's left over uh, from your mortar mix and smearing it on the wall. What that does is it, it, it closes, these block are very porous. And by doing this parging, then we kind of limit this, uh, this porousness, even though this is porous as well, this makes it less porous. And nothing more than tar. So the code says that we have to put a 3 8 parging on there, and then we have to put 
a uh, coating on it. So let's come back over here to our handy dandy picture here. And uh, so I've got my foundation wall. And I've got my footing. And in this particular area, we use uh, concrete blocks. So a CMU. And that stands for Concrete Masonry Unit. I want to point out something here. See that word? Masonry. See that word? That is masonry. I don't ever, 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 ever want to hear you call masonry masonry. All right? One of my biggest pet peeves is that uh, you you use proper terminology. You know, we might be hicks, we might be mountain people, but by God, we are not going to be called stupid. And so how to say things correctly is a big, big pet peeve. Also another one. Not Chimali. I don't even know how to spell Chimali. Chimali. No, absolutely not. Chimney. All right. So, again, proper terminology. For the most part, if you can't say masonry, I mean, if you can't say masonry, right, just call it a CMU because that's what it is. A CMU, Concrete Masonry Unit. You'll hear me call that all the time. So, all right, so I've harped on my little pet peeves long enough, and uh, there's got to be a different way here. Touch right in. Ruler. Erase. Let's just erase it. <coughs> I get to talking so much and have sinuses constantly, and that's why I cough all the time. Okay, so we have... CMU walls, and we're going to talk about it a little bit more. But uh, so remember that we've dug out this, we've dug our footings, and it looks like that here. Okay, we didn't dig anything more. This is our ground. And we don't have to to form it or anything like that because our our soil is what? Is it Cohesive or non cohesive or is it cohesionless? Cohesive, cohesionless, non cohesive. All right, so ours is cohesive, meaning that it will stand up on its own. We don't have to dig out. So, you know, I've heard. Uh, put that uh, drain pipe. All right. Well, if I was living in places like uh, New York or maybe down at the coast where I had to dig all of this out, then I'm going to stick that pipe right there because that's where it should go. And then we cover it with gravel and protect it with either that, that uh, sock or we use a, um, a landscape fabric right here to stop silt from penetrating into our rock area here. Because we don't want to mess this up. We don't want to stop this up. So, uh, unfortunately, we don't live at the beach. So, a lot of times when our backfill, you know, our backfill may go in here like this. Uh, right here is where ours goes in Western North Carolina. Then we put our gravel in. Uh, we put our, uh, we put our silt fence in and this needs to be wrapped all the way around it <coughs> and then we're going to go to the outside remember that uh, I said we're going to have to put parging on so I'm going to put my my gray parging that's going to be on here my 3 8 inch parging 
smear that on nice and thick. And then we're going to put on, and I'm going to change colors to purple. We're going to put on our foundation coating. And you know what? I'm putting this on the wrong daggum side. Let me back up here. Ignore what I just said. Duh. We're going to put our parging. It's going to, everything's going to go on the outside. Sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. All right, we're going to put our parging on here. All right, this is put on before this. So let's just back up and get rid of that. There. We're going to put our parging on. And then we're going to put our we're going to put our foundation coating on here. <coughs> oh, one thing to say about the parging. So when I put my parging on here, some of it fell. It's not all going to stick right on the wall very good. So if it falls, you leave it. This is called a cant strip. All right, so this cant strip helps divert water away from the wall and the footing. All right, so when we put our foundation coating on it, this is what we want to do. We want to put our foundation coating all the way down around this cant. Because this is CMU and this is poured concrete. All right, so CMU, poured concrete, we have a joint here that may or may not always hold. Uh, we do have some rebar that we put in here that's gonna hold these two together, but still you're gonna get a little crack in here and we need to make sure that we completely seal this. Now, at this point, that that's the end. That is code. All right, so code, cope, code. All right, so that is code. That's it. All right, grade of D. Remember that, grade of D. At this point, I would always put a plastic vapor barrier on here, okay? So let me back up and name this here. Coding. You got to put two coats on, two times foundation coating. And then we have our green here, which is poly vapor barrier. This is a six mil plastic. Okay. Plastic. So let me show you what that looks like. Da -da -da. Let me just put it on here. I'm done with that one. Plastic, plas, plastic, vapor, vape. See what I'm saying? I can't, I can't talk and do all of this at the same time. Okay, so image is plastic vapor barriers. All right, so this is, that's all it is. It's just plastic, roll of plastic. Uh, six mil so this is not a good idea this is uh -uh. don't do this mess this is bad uh so we'll talk about that when we get to insulation but uh this is okay uh it can it could cause some problems when you're doing it this way but don't do it that way so uh plastic this is a six mil this is probably more like a 10 mil so that means it's bigger so uh Okay, so you understand plastic vapor barrier. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, da -da -da -da. I'm going to go back to black. 
All right, so I'm going to put this, actually, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, too. Bam. All right, so what in the world is this? And, <coughs> again, you're going to pull it down just a little bit. Let's try that one here. This is a drain uh, screen. Or a uh, foundation drainage, drain screen, rain screen, ton of different ideas or ton of different names. Uh, so what does that mean? That means that uh, let me go back here and show you what that means. Duh. I've got that. I had that. There we go. This is a drainage mat. Okay, drainage mats go vertical on the wall, and uh, is there a Not really a good, I guess maybe. Okay, so we got this drainage mat here, and it it basically gives water a place to run. There we go. So when water comes in here and flows, we're going to have water, always, because this is backfill. Um, and so when we have backfill, all right, so... Uh, this is undisturbed soil, which is, you know, it's very, very, very compressed. And then we've put this, we've backfilled it. This is not, uh, this is less dense. So water goes or water moves to the less dense areas. So, you know, if we didn't have some sort of drain right here, then we could possibly have water that's going to fill up in here. And, we, you know, what's it going to do? It's going to find this little hole here, and then you're going to have water just shooting out into the room. And I'm not kidding you. It will, it will travel feet, very many feet, if there's enough pressure on it. Hydraulic pressure is one of the, uh, the biggest uh, pressurized uh, elements that we know. Just, just to give you an idea, water, H2O, is the only element that expands when frozen. Frozen. And when uh, boiled. All right, so it turns into steam, frozen, uh, ice expands. So this, you know, the more the, the more you get, the deeper you get in water, then the more it's going to be. <laughs> to give you an idea about water, and I'm, I'm kind of getting a little bit off topic, but I want to make sure that you understand why we do the things that we do. <coughs> let's go over here. So let's say that here is the surface of a body of water. And up here, we feel one atmosphere. All right one atmosphere right now you don't feel pressure now if you go up and down the mountain you're gonna this is gonna change slightly and yes your ears gonna pop and so forth like that but let's go to 33 feet 33 feet now we're at two atmospheres okay so we're underwater here and we are at two atmospheres let's go to 66 feet we are now at four atmospheres. Okay, see it changed, it doubled. Every 33 feet, 99 feet, we're going to be at, we're going to feel the effect of eight atmospheres. Now, if you've ever went swimming in the deep end of the of the pool, uh, of the larger pools that might be 12, 14 foot deep, as you go down, you feel a lot of pressure in your ears. All right. So, that is that kind of gives you an idea of how much water weighs. Now you know it weighs eight pounds per square foot, and I didn't say a gallon. It weighs eight pounds uh, per square foot. So that's twelve by twelve by twelve. I'm sorry, cubic feet. Duh. Cubic feet. All right. So that is twelve by twelve by twelve. Eight pounds. That's a lot. Okay, so when we're talking about our foundation over here, then that gives us 
uh, a reason to think that, well, if we don't, flow down through here very good into this pipe here, then we're going to have it shooting into our, our living space, and we don't want that. So by putting in this, uh, dra this drain screen, drainage mat, uh, rain screen, whatever you want to call it here, we're giving the, air, the water a space to run down here to get in the pipe so that we can run it out and get it out of here. <coughs> we don't want this water to build up in that backfill space here, okay? We don't want water to build up here. That's a no-no. So lastly, what we can do is we can add some insulation to all of this and protect, give us a little bit of extra uh, insulation going on here and this insulation I've I've heard different arguments as to where to put it I've heard them oh let's put it right up against the wall no let's put it over here honestly I don't know you know where should where should it go I think it probably deals mostly with uh, wh what kind of climate you're gonna have if you're up north you may want to have it closer in we have a mixed climate it's probably okay to leave it out uh, the one thing about this is critters. So insects can build tunnels through this that, you know, you can, you can dig a hole through this all day long if you want to, by putting it up close up against, uh, your house, then you're allowing tunnels to grow up against your house. So because we're in a mixed environment, you know, we want to kind of keep it out of the house a little bit. Remember too that when you're when you're doing all your backfill, any kind of time you do your backfill, you really don't want to have wood shavings here. I see a lot of houses that they put mulch here, and that's not a good idea. This should be some some sort of uh, non-organic material, some sort of mineral material such as sand, rock, uh, gravels, that kind of thing. Not mulch. Do not put mulch up against your house. Uh, you get uh, fire ants and, and termites that, that just live and thrive in this stuff, and that's kind of an invitation into your house, and you don't want that. So there's that. All right, so I think I have covered everything that need to be covered. Uh, let me go back over here and look at the list one more time to make sure. So... Uh, da, da, da. We've talked about site work, mountainous, flat, coastal, cohesive, uh, cohesionless, non-cohesive, peer spreads, monolithic, non-traditional, uh, foundations, wood, masonry, steel. We haven't really talked about w foundations, wood, masonry, steel, uh, though I do want to come back over here to the, to the code. They talk about wood foundations in uh, chapter 4 foundations I do not recommend a wood foundation in the south uh, because of reasons that we just talked about so there you go a pretty picture of a wood foundation in the code and I just I, I, I'm sorry it's not where we have uh, uh, a lot of water uh, and stuff so I just I'm just a big non-fan of that, so I would definitely stay away from that. Steel, uh, we don't do a whole lot of steel foundations unless we are in the mountains. And uh, let me take you on a trip here. Uh, map. Google. And let's turn the, come on. Where's my satellite view there we go so there's my satellite view so here is uh, here is me and uh, here is Morganton y'all are over here somewhere Asheville Hendersonville Marshall so depending on what where you're at over here this is me all right so I'm over here in Morganton 
So let's take a drive uh, over towards uh, Lenore, and then we're going to go up 321, past Happy Valley, and we're going to get up here to Blowing Rock. And I want to take you to this little place right here. So see this house here? Ain't that a beautiful house? And I want to show you something. Grab the little man here, pull him up here, plop him down. All right, so here's the view that you see from right there in the road. Why don't you look at this house? Well, heck, you can't see it. Let's go up the road here a little bit. Maybe we see it. Usually they do these during the wintertime when there's no foliage. And the old pictures, they've updated this recently, and the old pictures, you can see the big skeleton form of steel that is holding this house on this side here, this cliff. And I mean to tell you, it is some kind of cliff. Uh, when they were building it, uh, none of this uh, was around, and, and you could just look right up the skirt of that house. They've since put some uh, um, lattice work and stuff up there, but man, oh man, oh man, this house here, uh, they actually have a bridge that, uh, let's see if I can, how do I get out of this? Go back. Might be able to see it, probably not. So there's a bridge right here that takes you to the house, from the road to the house. There's a bridge, let's see if we, is this? Nah, that's not gonna give it to us, nope. So we can't go onto that road. But this is uh, Blowing Rock. The the actual Blowing Rock itself is right here. So you can kind of get an idea of where that is. And so that house right there is just, man, it is setting right on the hillside. And it has uh, a... So this, this slope is probably like that. It may even be greater than that. And this house is setting here. And remember I told you how to bridge over to this road here. And so this entire house sets on a, a steel webbing that is absolutely just tied to this. This is nothing but rock here. And then, you know, somewhere down here you got the road. Unbelievable. I wish I had a better picture of it. I should have taken a picture of it when, before the uh, foliage was around. So anyway, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, uh, there is a lot of stuff here for you guys to go along. And I've, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm getting the same questions over and over and over. Um, notice that this, this test is still hidden from you guys, and I hid that for a reason. Uh, because you're just not ready for it yet. When you re when you then you're going to be ready for the foundations and the site works, and that is going to be opening up very soon. Because uh, other than the disaster prone areas, I think I've covered everything else. And so I want you guys to uh, you know, like I say, I get these questions. Or are we going to have Zoom? No, you got tons of stuff here to do. Uh, read it, watch the videos, and uh, ask me questions. So, matter of fact, uh, I'll try to set up a forum on here. So if you have any questions, uh, then I'll, I'll set up a forum here and everybody can see the questions. So for right now, guys, thank you very much. Uh, we've been going at this for, I've been going at this for an hour. So hopefully you guys have taken some some breaks and so forth in between there, and I don't want to bore you to death. But again, let me know, uh, text me, let me know how these videos are coming out. Uh, am I covering the, the material correctly to you? Uh, so if I'm doing a good job, tell me. If I'm doing a shitty job, tell me. That way I can help improve on these, uh, these lectures. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later.